Have you ever wondered the airplanes we travel in today are of the same design as they were designed 50-60 years ago? When there is advancement in all the industries, all the sectors around the globe, why the de design of the airplanes is consistent and why still we are still being dependent on the fuel-based propellers till date? So for a fact, there was an engineer who came up with a different design of airplane and it was conceptually very very right. And even NASA has tried to build that into a practical concept, but they failed. So in this video too of Aerosync Explains video series, we are going to look on how an engineer of NASA came up with this concept of oblique wing and they tried and tested everything, but what were the advantages and disadvantages of this concept and why they failed tragically to turn it into a commercial success. So let's see. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So if you're new to the video, I'm Jaktar Singh and I talk about anything interesting going on in the aerospace industry and much more. So in 1955, there was a top aeronautical engineer of NASA, Robert Jones, who came up with a newly different concept of airplane design. His groundbreaking work on data wing has led to the creation of transformative discovery how a single wing airplane can work. He called that concept as oblique wing. So oblique wing is a single wing airplane which is able to change its sweep angle during the flight. Intuitively it all sounded so wrong like how is it even possible? So everyone thought the airplane will just destroy itself in the flight. But through various wind tunnel tests Robert Johns proved that it is aerodynamically stable and controlled. So there were many of the prototypes that were built and surprisingly they were controlled and they were stable. So you must be thinking why even oblique wing? Why one wing airplane? So basically when we see everything depends on the cost efficiency cost of the fuel and how much fuel efficiency is aeroplane is generating. So fuel efficiency is directly related to the drag. How much drag an airplane is facing while it is in flight. So Robert Johns conceptualized if there is one wing and if it is swept at an angle of 45 degree or more till 60 degrees so they can actually come up with a very less drag coefficient. So there were many advantages of that. First of all with a single pivot mechanism it is less complex and it is more stable and since it is only one pivot mechanism there are very very less stress and strain forces on that one pivot. And second point is the center of mass of an airplane will remain unchanged when there is change of that oblique wing position. So by the mid 1970s, NASA moved beyond the design on the theoretical and they actually moved beyond designing it and going through wind tests. Meanwhile, leading companies like Lockheed and Boeing were also asked to study the oblique wing characteristics for the future success of commercial aviation. So while this was being studied, the dream of having a supersonic flight actually boomed and actually it was very near to becoming a reality until Boeing came up with the decision of not moving forward with the decision because in 1975 Concorde has failed tragically. Because of its big sonic boom, Concorde was banned from entering many of the airspaces of many of the countries. So that is the reason it failed tragically. But eventually in 1976 NASA started its work of prototyping that. So in 1976, they actually created a prototype and it was pilot-led aircraft which was generated which was named as AD-1. Design was very modest with bare minimum control system and with no computer assistance. It entirely that flight was dependent on the pilot skill. And then NASA's research came out. It is really very easier for it to maneuver when the pivotal angle is from 0 to 45. But when it goes beyond 45 degrees, till the reach of 60 degrees, it is really very difficult to maneuver the AD-1. This was actually happening because of the phenomenon called cross-coupling. So whenever they were trying to pitch up or down, there was a problem in rolling the airplane. And whenever they were trying to roll down the plane, it was actually automatically, there was a lot of higher pitch being involved. So that is the reason because of the cross-coupling, it was not easy to maneuver that beyond the pivotal angle of 45 degrees. But the AD-1 has maxed out at 320 kilometers per hour and it was nowhere near to transonic boom. So these were the challenges which were involved in the testing of AD-1 first. 
by 1984 there was a lot of interest from the navy as well so the nasa and navy they tried to have a collaboration to work on this oblique wing testing so it was planned that the design will be done by 1986 and the construction of the collaborated airplane will be done by 1990 so the flight was planned for may 1991 but in 1986 there was a major fiscal deficit of navy and they have to pull out their budget from this collaboration and nasa was not able to pull this program off all by itself because it was costing a lot many dollars due to this budget issue in 1987 this plan was cancelled so nearly half of the century and all of the efforts of engineers big corporations this flight was cancelled and this theory never came to life but engineer Johns never gave up on his this concept and till the age of 80 he was still researching on this concept he was so interested in this concept because it was pinnacle of aviation because that concept actually promises to provide Mach 1.5 speed with a lot more efficiency than the current aeroplanes. So this concept is still in the papers and never actualized. The reason is conflict of interest because many of the big corporations feel like it is not viable to spend so much of billions of dollars in developing a prototype to gain single digit efficiency in the fuel. But such concepts and such initiatives are really very important for the future of the aviation industry. So that was the whole story. So the main reason of sharing this story with you is aviation industry is full of big ideas. And what I feel is who are going to actualize these ideas is one of us. So that is the reason it is really very important to learn more about such ideas so that whenever you have resources and when you have an opportunity, just to pragmatize this thing because aviation industry is going to be shaped by us all. So for more such videos and for more informative videos, subscribe to the channel and like this video and stay tuned for the video 3 of Aerosync Explains. See you in the next video.